Hello class, today I want to talk about factoring and using factoring to solve difficult quadratic equations. We've seen simple quadratic equations already where you could factor say something like x squared plus 5x plus 6 and we I believe in class we said add to the middle term and multiply to the last term. Well this is going to be a little bit more complicated than that. It's going to involve more difficult coefficients in particular in front of the x squared term. Let's look, for instance, at 12x squared minus x minus 35 equals 0. Now the way you want to start this is thinking, what possible combinations of numbers can I think of to multiply to a 12? For instance, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. But we're going to see in a second why order matters. So we'll also have to include 4 and 3, 6 and 2, and 12 and 1, which are just the first three reversed. You also need to think about what possible combinations can multiply to the last term, which is 35. 1 and 35, and 5 and 7. And of course, we reverse those also to include 7 and 5, and 35 and 1. Now the next step, unfortunately, involves a little bit of guess and check. And for a difficult problem, I should say, a lot of guess and check. And as time goes by and you get more experienced and more used to these, you will find little tricks and little shortcuts that help you guess better, quicker, but it's still always going to be a bit of guess and check. So I set up these two sets of parentheses side by side with the x and a plus or minus holder place. That just means I don't know whether that second term is going to be positive or negative yet. And I leave space to put things in front of the x and after that plus or minus sign. And this is where we start trying combinations. For instance, 1x and 12x would multiply to give you a 12x squared, so that 1 and 12, which are on the left side of those sets of parentheses, came from that left column on a previous slide. And then the 1 and the 35 are an option that would multiply it to the 35. Uh, so let's test it and see what happens. You'll notice that 1x and 35, if you multiply them, that's considered the outer product, and you would get 35x. If you multiply 1 and 12x, you get the inner product, which is 12x. Now, what are we going to do with this outer product and this inner product? Well, when you're multiplying two binomial terms, you FOIL, remember? First, outer, inner, and last. And the outer and inner terms always add to make that middle term. Well, that's what's happening here. The outer product and the inner product have to add or subtract to give you that middle term. So, so you're thinking about combinations of 35 and 12 or 35x and 12x, and the only thing you're going to be able to come up with is a 47x and a 23x. And those could be positive or negative depending on the signs of the coefficients, but still those are the only two different number values, 47 and 23, that you could come up with by adding or subtracting those two terms. And those aren't going to multiply to a negative one, so unfortunately I think we picked the wrong one to start off with. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about how you can narrow down some of these possibilities. Um, consider if we did a 2x and a 6x, that would multiply to a 12x squared, and a 1 and a 35, that would multiply to a 35. So these could be, this could be a possible solution. Now, if I switch the 35 and the 1, that's a completely different solution that's also possible. However, if I also switch the 2x and the 6x, do you see how that is the same solution as the first solution? All we did is we switched the order of 2x plus, plus or minus 1 and 6x plus or minus 35. And it's still the same two binomials, which means they would multiply to the same exact uh, quadratic. Whether or not that's the one we're looking for, uh, I'm not sure yet. But what I'm saying here is, for that reason, you can actually reduce the number of possibilities. You only have to consider one set being reversed, either that first column or the second column. Because if you reverse both, you end up back where you started. So let's consider just if that first column was just those three options and we reverse the second column to give us all possible combinations. This is where the guess and check can get messy and you just gotta grunt through it and check until you get the correct answer. Uh, we're gonna assume we've already done that grunt work for the sake of time and look at the correct solution 3x and 5 and 4x and 7 but let's figure out why that's the correct solution. Let's check the outer product. We get 21x for the outer product, and we get 20x for the inner product. And we think, can we combine those somehow to get a negative x? And we can. If the 20x is positive, 
and we subtract a 21x, that will give us a negative x. So this is where we change the signs, where those placeholders, that plus or minus sign was a placeholder. How can I manipulate those signs to get a positive 20x and a negative 21x? And that'll happen when the 5 is positive. That way, 5 times 4x would be a positive 20. And if the 7 were negative, that way, 3 times negative 7 would be a negative 21. Typically, you don't factor just for the sake of factoring. I mean, sometimes you will, but in the real world, if you were doing some kind of problem that involved factoring to get roots or something, um, you would not be factoring just for the sake of factoring. You would be solving an equation. And so that's what this was set up to do. Let's finish it. Let's take it across the finish line. If two things are multiplied together and equal 0, one of them must be 0. That's called the zero product property. This means either 3x plus 5 equals 0 or 4x minus 7 equals 0. And if we work on that left side first, we'll subtract 5 from both sides, get 3x equals negative 5, and then we'll divide by 3 and get x equals negative 5 thirds. Now to look at that right side, 4x minus 7 equals 0, we would add 7 to both sides to get 4x equals 7, and then we divide by 4 and get x equals 7 fourths. So there's our solution. x must equal negative 5 thirds or x equals 7 fourths. Well, that's it. Hopefully this will be a good example of review if you're struggling with your homework. They do get tougher, but there are also some that are simpler as well, so this one's right in the middle. Good luck and happy factoring.